Email aliasing is a powerful and popular strategy in the privacy community. It can help protect you from spam, phishing, and account compromise. But many people seem to struggle with how it works or how to configure it. In this video, I'm going to explain to you what email aliasing is, how it can help you, and how I recommend using it. There are many ways to support the new oil, but in this video, I'm going to highlight a specific one that is topical, a Simple Login affiliate link. Simple Login is one of the email aliasing services that I recommend and I will be talking about in this video. Now, just to be clear, they have not sponsored this video. Furthermore, you are welcome to not use the link or to use a different aliasing provider. That is totally okay. But if you do decide to go with Simple Login after this video and you want to help support us at the same time, we have an affiliate link where we get some credit on our account and we do use Simple Login quite extensively at the new oil. So this would be very helpful. If you go with someone else or you already have an aliasing solution, there are other ways to support us as well, like donations, cryptocurrency, and other affiliate links. Every little bit helps. Thank you so much. So let's start off by explaining what email aliasing is. Email aliasing, also called email masking or email forwarding, is simply a service that forwards emails to your inbox using a different email address. Just to be clear, this is not the same as a temporary email address like Gorilla Mail, MailDrop, or 10 Minute Mail. These are permanent, at least until you decide to disable them. If you're still confused, it works like this. Let's say I sign up for one of these services. I sign up using my primary main inbox, my email address. When I go to another website and I wanna sign up for a newsletter or a new account, instead of giving them my usual main email address, I make up a new email address from the service and I give that to the service in question. Then whenever that newsletter emails me, it forwards straight into my inbox like a regular email. This saves me the hassle of having to sign out and manage multiple inboxes. Just to give you an example, let's say I use Simple Login. So I go to Simple Login, I sign up using my primary email address, and then let's say I wanna sign up for EFF's newsletter. I go to EFF, I click sign up, and instead of putting in my usual email address, I generate a new one from Simple Login and I give them that instead. And then whenever EFF sends out their newsletter, it shows up in my inbox. So why would we do this? Why not just use our email address everywhere? Or why not use multiple inboxes? Well, one of the biggest reasons is spam. If this site ever sells my email address or has a data breach, then that email address is likely going to start getting spam from a variety of services that I don't care about. In that case, I simply disable that email address and the spam stops. It's the same as deleting any other email address. The emails no longer come to my inbox and my inbox is a little bit cleaner. This is also great for those really annoying companies that will not respect unsubscribe or opt out requests. That's also a safety thing. A lot of the time when data breaches leak email addresses, those email addresses get used for phishing attempts and some of them are getting really good these days. Another security benefit is that email address is usually half of your login. If you know my email address, you already have half of the login. Now you just need to figure out the password. With email aliasing, if my email address leaks, you still don't know what provider I'm using. I could be using Proton, Tutanota, I could be using Gmail or Yahoo if I hate myself for some reason. This also helps to prevent against tracking and attacks. There are a lot of websites where I can go type in somebody's email address and it will automatically search the web and tell me other places that they have an account. If I'm using multiple email aliases, you can't do that. You can't tie those accounts together. That's also true on the automated side. If I sign up for Facebook and Twitter with the same email address, do you think those companies have any issue knowing that I'm the same person and suggesting friends to me from there? It's just one more way to reduce tracking. Finally, in the event of a data breach, it helps me know where the breach occurred and how worried I should be. So for example, if it was a newsletter that had a data breach, it's annoying, but it's probably not a big deal. I just signed up with an email address and I get a newsletter. However, if it's my bank's alias, then well, I should probably be pretty worried and I should harass them about that until they give me a straight answer. And for those of you who don't think data breaches are very common, be sure to check out Surveillance Report, the weekly current events podcast I do, because we have a data breach section literally every single week, multiple breaches every week. They're insanely common. Now, there are pros and cons to email masking. Personally, I think the pros outweigh the cons, but I'll go ahead and list them here so you can make up your own mind. The benefits are things like managing spam, preventing credential stuffing, which is what I mentioned where they know your email address and they can just try the passwords. And if your main inbox provider ever goes under, you can just point it to another mailbox. 
The drawbacks are you are trusting another party with your data and it does break native encryption. So for example, let's say both of us are using Tutanota, but you email me with an email address that comes from a non-addy. In that case, the encryption will be broken as the email passes through a non-addy servers. You would have to email me directly to maintain that encryption or use a PGP key. Real quick, I wanna to touch on custom domains. This is where you buy your own domain name, like the new oil.org. I personally recommend that everyone should get a custom domain. Some popular choices in the privacy community are Namecheap, 1984, and Orange Website Hosting. Custom domains will give you additional resilience. For example, I mentioned that if your inbox provider goes under, you can point your email aliasing choice at a different service. But what if they go under? Well, with a custom domain, you can just apply that same domain to any other inboxing service and things will continue to run. Now for the record, the domain register might go out of business. The three I recommended, I don't think are likely to do that anytime soon. And also, if we're gonna be honest, we have to be practical here. You can only do so much. You can't become your own name registrar. I mean, you probably can, but at that point, your resources are so advanced, I don't even know why you're watching my channel. So pick a provider that you trust that you think is gonna be around for a while, and that's the best you can do, really. Now, there are a couple drawbacks to a custom domain. For example, if you're the only one using it, then in theory, it could be used to track you. For example, if I have coolguy.com as my domain for email, and I'm signing up with that domain at like 10 different websites, you can probably be sure it's the same guy. There's also the cost of renewing that domain every single year. And depending on what domain you go with, that could be anywhere from three to five bucks a year to hundreds of dollars a year. So like I said at the top, a lot of people struggle with how to use aliasing. They're not sure when they should use a custom domain, when they shouldn't, if they should use the provided domains at all. So I'm gonna go ahead and explain my decision-making process. Now, just to be clear, this is not a Bible. You don't have to do it this way, but hopefully by explaining what I do, this will help you guys with your decision-making. I have two custom domains. I have one that's just a generic sounding email domain, and I have one that is my real name, so natebartram.com. If this is a very, very important account that is tied to my real name, like banking, jobs, or housing, I use myrealname.com. I also don't like to use, for example, bank at myname.com. I like to use a randomly generated username. I don't know if this actually provides any additional protection, but it makes me feel a little better. I will still know in the event of a data breach where that came from, and truthfully, the criminal probably will too, but I don't know, I just feel a little better knowing that like my bank's name is not blatantly stated and obviously giving away where I bank. I, I don't know, it just makes me feel better. It's probably useless, but I like it. If there is stuff that is important to me, but it is not necessarily tied to my real name, like Bitwarden, for example, then I use the general sounding email address. This is also really useful if I'm trying to sign up for something and they're just not letting me use the provided domains. Maybe they blocked simple login, for example. So in that case, I will use my generic email address and usually that does work. Not always, and we'll talk about that in a second. And finally, if it's something that I just really don't care about, then I will use whatever domain is provided to me by my email aliasing provider. So for example, things like a personal Reddit account, a personal Twitter account, things that I enjoy, but if I lost them, it's not really a big deal to me personally, then I will use whatever they give me. Now it should be noted, these vary from person to person. Maybe you run a business and Twitter is a very key part of your business and you don't wanna lose that account. So you might wanna go ahead and use a custom domain for that. My personal Twitter account, I'm not really gonna be shedding any tears if I get locked out or lose access. So not really a big deal to me. Now I did mention that another benefit of having a custom domain is that sometimes these providers get blocked at certain services. It's kind of a constant game of cat and mouse, which is why you'll notice a lot of providers give you multiple domains to choose from. They're trying to always stay ahead of that. Some websites simply just block those domains. Some of them will block everything except known providers like Gmail and ProtonMail and stuff like that. Some of them unfortunately seem to use data breaches to validate if your email is legit because at this point data breaches are so common that people will just kind of assume that your email has probably been caught in one at some point. For this reason, I have an old mainstream provider that I've held on to for decades at this point. And that's what I use. If I absolutely must have a service, but they're not accepting any of the email addresses I give them, I will give them that old provider that's been caught up in a billion data breaches. Now, just to be clear, this introduces another question. Do I really need this service that bad? Is it sensitive? Am I willing to send it through that provider? Those are choices you have to make. All right, with that said, I rounded up a list of six popular email forwarding providers out there. So let's go ahead and compare them. I'm gonna go in alphabetical order, but I'm also going to go in order of most recommended to least recommended. So the first two that I recommend the most are Anonaddy and Simple Login. 
Honestly, these two are almost identical, and I think either one is a really solid choice. I encourage you to check them both out. They both offer free plans and decide which one is right for you. Now, Anon Addy offers three plans, free, $12 a year, and $36 a year, or $4 a month for that last one. Depending on which plan you go with, they offer unlimited number of aliases, up to 20 custom domains, up to 30 inboxes where you can receive email at, 100 daily sends and replies, and the ability to add PGP. For the record, I recommend doing this if you pick a provider that supports it, because it's another layer of protection from your provider. I already recommend using an encrypted inbox, but now this means the message will be encrypted even as it enters the inbox. Of course, it is decrypted where the email forwarding is involved, but I'm always in favor of more protection when it's available. Simple Login, on the other hand, only has two plans. They have a free and a $30 a year, or also $4 a month. Again, depending on the plan you go with, they also offer unlimited aliases, unlimited custom domains, unlimited inboxes, and the PGP feature, but that is only available in the paid plan, whereas with a non-addy, it's free. Simple Login did recently pass an independent security audit, so that's good. But they were also recently bought out by ProtonMail. For those who are not fans of ProtonMail, or for those who simply don't want to put all their eggs in one basket, that could be an issue. On the other hand, it could be nice to have everything in one house and trust less parties. That's entirely personal preference and up to you. Both of these services are open source and both of them can actually be self-hosted in case you just don't want to trust anybody. So that's always an option. These next two providers are not open source, but they're kind of popular. So I'm going to go ahead and mention them here. The first one is 33Mail. They have three plans, free, a dollar a month, and five dollars a month. They offer unlimited aliases, up to five custom domains, only support a single inbox, only offer a hundred replies, you cannot initiate an email from them, and they do not support PGP. The second choice is Abbey and Blur. And this, in my opinion, is an example of an app trying to do too much at once and doing all of it kind of poorly. Their app includes a password manager and a mass card provider, and I believe also a mass telephone number if you pay for premium. It does do a lot, but in my opinion, the features are very limited. For example, they do have a free tier, but the premium stuff is $40 to $100 a year, depending on which one you go with. They do offer unlimited aliases and unlimited replies, but they only support one inbox. They do not support any custom domains. You cannot initiate a conversation by sending an email, and they do not support PGP. Their email addresses are strictly limited to random strings of letters and numbers, so it can be really hard to tell somebody your email address. Truthfully, I am not a fan of either of these services because I think a non addy and simple login offer way more at a reasonable price, but they are popular and they might be right for you, so feel free to check them out. Finally, we have a couple of newcomer honorable mentions. Both of these have to be managed via a browser plugin, and I'm not a fan of browser plugins. The more plugins you have, the easier your browser is to fingerprint. On the other hand, some people like that really quick access. So again, it's personal preference. The first one is DuckDuckGo. The service is free. You can only have one inbox, but the cool thing about them is they automatically remove trackers from your email. So they will scan the email, find any tracking pixels or tracking links and remove those and then forward it on to you. They claim they will never log these emails and that as soon as they scan them and send them on, they are discarded and not stored in the server. They do not offer any custom domain support. You cannot send or reply to an email, but you can generate as many forwarding emails as you want. So that is pretty cool. The final one is Firefox Relay. This is free or a dollar a month. With the free plan, you get five email addresses and with the paid plan, you get unlimited amounts. They said you are allowed one subdomain. I'm not sure if that means a custom domain or just like a username kind of thing. You can reply to emails. Now, a quick note on Relay, as well as a non-addy and simple login, Bitwarden recently added this feature where with all three of those services, there's an API key found in the settings of each of those services and you can add it to Bitwarden and then you can generate email addresses on the fly when you create new identities. So if you're signing up for a new service, you don't have to go to two different services to generate a password and generate an email. You can do it all at once. So if you find yourself using that feature, that may be a plus for Firefox Relay. Like I said, in my opinion, the only two really worth looking into are a non-addy and simple login. I think they offer the most features and the most functionality, but there's six choices for you guys. So feel free to explore them all and find the ones that work best for you. On that note, remember that there are many ways to support the new oil. And one that is related to this video is our simple login affiliate link. 
If you sign up for a simple login plan using this link, we get a credit on our account and we use simple login premium a lot. So this helps put a little bit more of your donation money back into our pockets that we can use for other things. Again, you do not have to go with simple login. You can go with a non-addy, you can go with Firefox Relay, you can go with Abbey and Blur, go with whatever is best for you. I'm just saying, if you do go with simple login, this is an easy way to support us at no extra cost for you. If you choose not to use the affiliate link, which is totally okay, we're fine with that. Or if you choose to go with another service, you can also support us in other ways, like donating with fiat currency or cryptocurrency, as well as other affiliate links for other services you may be interested in. Every little bit helps. Thank you so much. Hopefully this video has explained how email aliasing can help you, how to get started, and given you some starting points on how to organize your aliases, and maybe even given you some services worth checking out. For more information about email aliasing, check out our website at thenewoil.org. Now get out there and take back control of your inbox.